Hi guys, this is Rob with Deluxe Gaming. I'm here with kind of a special episode to talk with you guys about a old friend. An old friend named Firefall. Let me tell you, Firefall and I met last year during the open beta period and I fell in love with the idea of Firefall. Unfortunately for me and many other people, the uh, group that made Firefall, there was some weird stuff happening uh, and it kind of went stagnant and I turned my back on Firefall, sadly, because, you know, there, there's, there's a variety of different games in the world. There's some that are really, really interesting and fun to find new ways to make new builds like Space Engineers and very detail oriented and, and you're always finding better ways to build, you know, a better mousetrap. And then there's games like Civilization, where you're conquering the world, and and it's it's very strategy oriented. It's like chess. And then there's you know there's all these different subcategories of games. And I love bits and pieces of every subcategory. The one category I've always struggled to really embrace is the first-person shooter category. In other words, uh, this is going to shock you all. I have never really played Call of Duty. I just haven't had much of an interest. I'm sure it's fun. I don't want to get a whole bunch of messages about how could you have not played Call of Duty. But it's just never been my thing. Uh, I, I've had many friends that love, I mean absolutely love FPSs, but I've always been kind of on the fence and really never found something that I truly, truly enjoy. Until two games arrived for the PC. One of them was Defiance and the other was Firefall. Defiance, I liked Defiance, Defiance for its simplicity. You could go on and just shoot some stuff, and you could shoot stuff with other people, strangers and friends and guild mates, and get better weaponry and move on in, in levels and fight bigger bad guys. It was a lot of fun. And then there's Firefall, which brings all of the best elements of a good MMO together with an open world sandbox feel and e great FPS gameplay. And it can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. So I'm just gonna pop in here. Uh, now, I, the reason I have come back to Firefall, Firefall is now done their open beta. Uh, they have been through all of their growing pains. They've journeyed from developing one type of game into developing a different type of game. Um, when I first started playing Firefall in the open betas, it was purely open sandbox, and it was it was fun. But after a while, you kind of got to that point where you didn't know what to do anymore. You didn't know what the point was. So that that's when I that's when I I gave up on it. And I love sandbox games. Don't get me wrong, but it really needed some direction. So they're releasing it again tomorrow on July 29th. Uh, 2014 and they're releasing it with the same sandbox feel but with missions and a storyline and a strong MMO feel like you find in other games that so you can have that linear progression and you can have that open world progression you can really go any way you want and it is the best of all things I think that make an MMO and I, I'll be honest with you of all those games that I was describing to you earlier, you know, some are some are really interesting, some are fun, but you know, you use your intellect, right? This this is this is all of those things. To me, I come in and I can be this big behemoth dreadnought mammoth and use a big gun. And it just feels good and it's fun. It is just fun. And on top of that, you can kind of fly. And you can do all these things right from the beginning. And uh, the PvE is outstanding. I have not played much of the PvP. I've only been back for a few days. And hence the reason I haven't posted a video in a couple days. Because, you know, I got, a, I got an email from the Firefall team saying, Oh, we're re-releasing. Come back. You get some VIP. And normally I don't go back to something once I've given up on it. But I decided, you know what? I, I liked it that much. And if they actually did make those improvements that they promised they were going to make, you know, why not? I'll give it another shot. And it's everything. Everything they've said it was going to be and more. I encourage anybody who has the ability to go online 
to download Firefall and just play. You know, it, the, there's different uh, di different battle frames. I'm going to show you guys. There's different battle frames for different types of play. Um, I always thought of myself as kind of the sneaky stealth guy, so I thought, you know, I'd try the sniper. You know, it wasn't for me. I, I it really have to be careful, and it is a lot of fun, don't get me wrong. Didn't suit my, my play style. So I tried a couple other. There's the uh, assault... Uh, kind of highly maneuverable but got a, a, a pretty big gun kind of battle frame hold on I wonder if I can take oh I don't know if I can show you guys from here maybe I can yes here we go so you've got your assault frames that are lighter than the dreadnoughts so very much lighter than what I have right now so they they are more mobile and they they have these you know you can customize your characters so I, I don't want to you know put them in a really tight category but, uh, you know, the fire cat, for example, uh, uses fire as its primary w means of defense and attack. And then the tiger, you know, I haven't played much of these, so I apologize. Um, he, he, so they, he uses a, a fusion cannon. And uh, uh, he can jump around a lot faster than, than the dreadnought. I'm using the dreadnought. I, I started out, like I said, I start, actually, sorry, I started out with the engineer. Loved the engineer. He's kind of like... He's a crafty sniper, so his weapons are... Uh, he's got weapons like sticky grenades that uh, stick to things, and then you hit a button, and they all explode at the same time. So he can be a really big damage dealer. But one-on-one, -on -one, kind of weak with just his weapon alone, that's why he can actually place turrets and, and shield generators and ammo and health uh, power-ups and stuff. Yeah, absolutely essential and so much fun to play. If you're a solo player... Engineer is probably the way to go. Um, biotech, you know, it's your healer. Your salt is kind of your versatile ranger type, uh, whereas your your dreadnought, which is what I'm playing, is kind of your your uh, your tank, right? Uh, highly highly shielded, lots and lots of defensive uh, abilities available to you, as well as. Um, a really big gun maybe doesn't do as much damage as some of the other classes, but it can stand up to a fight, any fight, it's just brutal. And then, of course, your recon, which is your stealth class, or your thief class, right, or your assassin, right? And all of these are versatile enough that uh, they can become different roles. And what's really interesting is if you actually say you, you work on your biotech, you actually start, so you can only have one character, you just wear different suits. So you work on your biotech suits and move that up in levels. You can actually use those same skills. I believe it, with the changes, you can actually use some of those same skills. Similar, not exactly, there are some skills that are just exclusive to the class, but then there's other skills that become available that you can actually share with some of the other suits or the other classes. So uh, it, they really have done a great job and uh, they've included now a, a level system that makes sense. And I got to tell you, the combat, in one word, if I could describe this game in terms of combat, it's satisfying. I never walk away from a Firefall experience without being completely satisfied. Now, I, I would love to show you guys um, a little bit of combat rather than just having me sit here and babble in your ear. Uh, so I think I'm going to set that up and then I'm going to come back. Okay, guys, what I think I'm going to do is we're going to sign up to do one of the Ares missions. Uh, so this this is one of the newer things within the game. So it used to be that Ares missions just popped up all over the place and you just went from one to another and there was no structure. And you didn't really know why you were doing all these things and they were pretty repair, pr repetitive. Now um, there are still randoms, er, random Ares missions that pop up in the world. But there's also these mission boards that allow you to pick and choose what you want to do. And I've been playing through them a little bit. Keep in mind, I've only been back for a couple days, so I haven't seen a whole bunch of them. But uh, they, th there's, there's new content, tons of new content. As a matter of fact, uh, where, we, where I am currently God, in the world a I need your is a brand new world. I'm just going to let him talk here and you can listen. Oh, never mind. I guess You're he's dead. You're near the Entree oh. facility, right? My people are being overrun. Help them, please. So I just signed up for a mission. Uh, th I think it's a good way to show off some of the, the combat in this game. Um, now, these missions, th there is a random element to them, and it, it's dependent on where you are in the world. So I'm in one of the newer, are in the newer areas of the world. Um, 
that I've been gradually opening up, you have to go to these towers and access the tower and, and link with them so that you can actually see the area surrounding them. Now that visibility only goes so far. Uh, of course, there's this dark area which uh, I can't see into, I can go into, but I can't see into. Um, and then there's the this area here which kind of has uh, kind of a sheeny look to it. And that is called the melding and that area we you can walk into that area but you'll die very very fast it's uh there's a big storyline around this i'm not going to get it, it too much into that because that's a much bigger story than this episode um but this area in particular is uh for levels 29 to 30 but you can go anywhere i was over here earlier today uh, at the 35 to 36 area doing all sorts of stuff and getting involved in, in groups and having a great time. So you're not limited to the level system at all, which is one of the things that is so frustrating to me when it comes to uh, MMOs in general. Uh, so it still has that sandboxy feel. You're in the world, you go where you want to go. There is nothing stopping you from going anywhere in the world. Uh, and uh, you know even even those games a lot of the games that say that there is a re isn't a restriction for going into those places in the world for example elder scrolls i'm not trying to pick on elder scrolls specifically but you, you can't really level up and do those quests on your own in the higher levels of the world um or in areas that it's above your level grade uh with you can't do it it's just impossible where you can get away with that kind of stuff if you are a good player there is no uh, tab targeting here. Everything is real combat. Absolute, hardcore, real combat. You, f you pick up your gun and you shoot at the bad guys. There's no other mechanics to it other than that. Um, I am hopefully driving in the right direction here. So, yeah, so we're going to head to this mission. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I just want to be sure. Oh, yeah. Okay, so see what's happened here is... Uh, uh, to get where we need to go it's saying I need to drive through the melding and I don't think that's a very good idea so well you know what this is a YouTube episode let's show you guys let's show the kids at home what happens when you go into the melding uh, okay aside from falling off the cliff I am taking a lot of damage and I just died so I'll be back with you in one second here guys alright guys I'm back okay so I showed you what happens when you go into the melding. It's not pretty. Uh, I wouldn't. I probably would have died there anyway, falling off the cliff on the uh, motorcycle. But you know, either way. Anyway, so what had happened is it actually respawned me back over here in in a much lesser area, as you can see, level 10 to 13. I am currently level 30, by the way, just in case you're wondering. So I was going to show off another part of the game, which I think everybody needs to see, is the gliding. Uh, I, our cage has gliders in the game, and it's so cool but it shouldn't take from the feeling you get in this one as well. The glider system is fantastic and uh, it's, it's worthwhile seeing. So anyway, I am going to, I've already set myself a waypoint. So this gray area here is sort of where we were. I can't see it because I have to be close to those uh, towers in order to see the area like I did before. So we are actually going to launch from here and try to get back into this area. So this is my personal waypoint. Um, you can make waypoints wherever. Anyway, there's mine. Um, so, and I can also make a... So these are like a device. So I can launch this or uh, power up this glider device that I have. I can use it every 120 seconds. This currently is a VIP version. So for coming back to the game after being away, they have given me this so that uh, uh, as an incentive to come back to the game. But you do have access to these within the game without that you can also purchase them you can also win them in different parts of the game so there's lots of fun trying to get better gliders because there are good gliders and there are okay gliders and then there are awesome gliders so here we go so gliding is not like flying gliding is trying to stay airborne as long as possible one while maintaining a practical um and stable speed so if you're going too fast you're probably going to hit the ground too quickly because you're always kind of aiming down, right? Um, and if you're going too slow, well, you're almost better off not using the glider. The advantage to the glider is that you can cover large distances quickly. So, uh, as you can see, we've almost run out of glider time. Very fun. Very, very fun. And you can get injured by hit, uh, hitting the ground. 
Oh, sorry, it's it's zoning. There's a little bit of a zone thing. So now we're going into that higher end, end zone again. Um, so you do take damage from falling uh, from a glider or whatever, but you remember, you always have your jump jets, so Great you can mind. always use your jump Thank jets. God, this is the other high. form of transportation, uh, one of many that you can use, and it feels and it looks run. awesome. Like, you really get Help that... Them, you really get that feeling like you're in a big, beastly bike, and it just feels good. And look at the mechanics here, like, the physics is, I mean, I don't want to say it's perfect, because everybody will tell me, no, it's not perfect, but it is really, really good. It just feels heavy. It feels bouncy. It feels fun. So, um, and you can also actually even see the gears in this speed, so you can see every time he raises or lowers a gear. When, as we're traveling. So I am actually driving this. There isn't any autopilot thing. And you can go wherever you want if you decide you're going to drive off a cliff or go off and do a jump like I just did. Hey, you can do that. So, and yeah, you can see the gears uh, just in the center there going up to gear four, right? So yeah, this is, this is the other form of travel and it is fun. It's super, super fun. There is other vehicles, there's other types of bikes and there is actually Oh, uh oh, okay, so, uh, okay, so we're at our mission location, let me just get ready here. <laughs> okay, so I'm not sure, we're supposed to defend a research team, and it looks like I've got friends that have just popped in. So, there's my machine gun, we are firing. So, of course, this is a three-dimensional battlefield, and you can treat it as such. And sometimes that serves you really well, and sometimes it doesn't. It's a three-dimensional battlefield, and everybody else in the world, including the PvE bad guys, know that. So they will aim at you while you're up in the air as well. But it does definitely give you an advantage, so not only can you dodge left and dodge right, you can dodge vertically, right? So it just gives you more options, and it is an effective tactic. You can, if you're really good at maneuvering, you can win battle by default just because nobody can hit you. It is very different from that generic MMO experience where you know you, you target somebody and there is some kind of math that's done to decide whether or not uh, you're hit. This is totally real. This is a real thing. It is me maneuvering and if they hit me, if it, if it physically looks like they hit me, they hit me. You know, no messing around. And at the bottom, on the le bottom left in the green is my health. I have 17,000 health points. Oh, the audio is amazing. Can you hear that? That's me going, oh, no, no. Oh, it's just great. It's so good. It's so satisfying. And some battles are just epic, like just absolutely epic. And, uh, you know, my wife laughs at me because I'll be sitting here and I'll be like sweating and screaming. And, you know, just it's just so intense. So I don't know if we did what we were supposed to do. Get to the research team. Okay, so we won this part. Yeah, that wasn't much of a battle. Some of the battles. Now, there's another thing that you can do called thumping. So if you decide you want to make this a more exotic experience for yourself, and you're not interested in the simplistic, just go out and do missions and shoot stuff, you can get into crafting. You can craft your own weapons. You can craft your friend's weapons. You can craft abilities. You can craft... You can craft... Uh, um, perishables. Stuff you use all the time. You know, like health and uh, ammunition and all those kinds of things and you know be a little bit of a profiteer you know whatever there's a marketplace a full global marketplace which is awesome uh, why am I not using my bike here oh, oh bugger all right. yes we oh yes uh, this is a special ability called the Thunder Dome that wasn't really what I intended to use here I was trying to turn that off so I can shoot this guy for some reason for some reason Oh. Now, I have two weapons on me. You can always have uh, one primary weapon and a secondary weapon. <laughs> it is really fun to, to, to work in this uh, kind of third-person mode, too. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's fun. You can just see all of the action. It looks so good. Okay, so where were we? We're going to put our bike out. And we are going to get to the research team, as it says there. So that marker was automatically put there by the system. Uh, so it can track your progress through your, through your missions. Very, very handy. Um, like I said, you can also make your own waypoints. And then there's your primary missions, or your, your uh, 
uh, storyline missions that uh, are always kind of up and around. And if you look at the right side of the screen, there's one called Black Rock, uh, Blackwater Anomaly, which is kind of my newest one that uh, I can go and do. And they're really tough if you try to do them at the actual level that they appear. Uh, like, like, like with most of these games, it can be pretty, uh, pretty insane, pretty nuts. So you can get your friends to come and join you to help you finish them. Oh, okay, I'm not even sure. But, oh, bad guys! Great. Uh, this weapon is my secondary. I use it if I run out of ammunition for this one. Oh yeah, the big chain gun. It's awesome. You should hear the plasma gun. It's stunning. It just sounds so intense. Oh, new bad guys. Ooh, what is that? Now, special abilities. So I've got a couple. This guy, I am set up to use a personal shield that sits in front of me. So if uh, not really appropriate for this situation, I'm going to use it anyway in a second here. As soon as I get control of the situation. <laughs> oh, so satisfying. Okay. Yes, I know. Little bugs. I'm so excited about killing little bugs, but it's worthwhile. It's so cool. Anybody that has the ability to go online needs to download this on the 29th, which is tomorrow. It's worth every minute. You'll come on to here and you will just love it. I think I'm supposed to do something with those scientists. So the personal shield, here's the personal shield. So it lasts for, you know, while it depends on what level. Like, like I said, if you get into manufacturing, you can build these devices. And you can build better ones than what are generally the ones that are stock, right? Yeah, so <laughs> um, I've also got uh, a little a little device that'll allow me to teleport. I'll show you that in a second here. It's awesome. So I shoot this, and boom, I appear where the bullet lands. Isn't that cool? Eh? And all of these uh, have unlimited uses unless they become destroyed because I do not maintain them. Uh, oh, did I finish that? Wow, that was a super easy mission. So easy. I mean, some of these missions are just crazy. There is monsters coming. Monsters and bad guys and gun guys with guns coming from every direction. And it's just... It, it's mind-blowing. Um, I know Defiance was a little bit like that. Actually, Defiance was a lot like that. Defiance... Anybody that's played Defiance knows what I'm talking about. It can get pretty crazy. But people mob the areas. Like, it, the areas would get so covered with people, like... It was crazy. This uh, just doesn't seem to happen, and maybe it'll start to happen later, but, you know, you can run missions on your own. You don't need to have buddies, and if they're not instants, they're still open in the world, so if somebody comes along, they can help you. Uh, but I just, I don't think the areas will get camped out. Oh boy. Okay. So, another one of the uh, devices I have on this guy is called, uh, I forget what it's called, but look at that. Every, it just does this thumping thing, and everything within range gets the crap beat out of it. Except for these guys, because saving these guys is kind of funny. Awesome! And, you know, not so important necessarily to be using jump jets in this situation. These guys are pretty easy. Look at this. Oh yeah, just crunch. So this, uh, the mammoth that I'm flying right now, so he's a highly defendable, uh, defensible Whoops. Um, so he's the tank, right? So he's... Whoops, what am I doing? I'm hitting the wrong button. So six. There we go. Reloading. Uh, I have some reloads of ammunition in case I run out. Okay, so there we go. Let's finish this. Oh, where'd it go? It's gone. Get to the research team. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm winning or not. I'm talking and not really paying attention to what the actual objectives are. The objective could be to save all the uh, research guys and maybe I'm not doing that. I don't know. I'm just shooting stuff and trying to tell you guys about the game. Okay, so what was I saying? Oh yeah, the Mammoth, he's, uh, he's designed for short range defense. So you'll notice when we show his crosshair again, it's this really big cross crosshair and it shoots within that little, oh sh shit! bad okay so uh, that's okay because you have jump jets these the jump jets make this game honestly it is the funnest thing ever okay so 
bike is reusable. Not all bikes are reusable. This one I think I got for becoming a founder within the game or something. And I'm pretty sure there is... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm positive there are missions around the level 16 area. I don't know why I jumped off there. Around this level 16 area uh, that allow you to get a permanent bike as well. As well as other vehicles that are in the game. You just gotta, you just gotta look for them. It's just like any other MMO. You gotta fight for the things you want, right? And uh, I think you can, you can also craft them as well. So if you're into uh, thumping, so what thumping is, is it's a thumper is a device that you call down that pounds into the ground and pounds out minerals into this device, into the thumper. And while that's happening, it attracts the thumping, the sound of the thumping, the vibrations of the thumping cause critters, bad guys, to come flying out of nowhere because it, it pisses them off. It makes them angry. So uh, while it's something, you've got to protect the thumper from these bad guys, from the critters and stuff, from attacking the thumper. Otherwise, you lose it all and, you know, possibly lose the thumper too, which you have to build or buy from somebody else. All right, here's this might be the last piece. I don't know. Get to the research team. I think we're supposed to save these guys. I don't know. I'm not sure what we're supposed to be doing. I think we're supposed to be keeping them alive. Oh. So let's actually focus on trying to keep these guys alive. Now these little bugs, they turn around and shoot you with their butthole. Which is interesting. These guys, they have a lot of hit points. And I think they are actually shooting at the scientists. And that's why I keep losing these? I don't know. So uh, let's actually do make an effort to save the scientist. Notice I'm reloading. Yeah, see, look at how big my crosshair is. So I shoot within the range of that little bubble. So it's good, but it means I'm not very accurate at long range. I can do a lot of damage at close range. At close range, it's crazy damage. All right. Okay, I think we... Yeah, we got these guys. Reload. Uh, you know, and not a lot of ammo, ammo but, you know, at close range, that just does so much damage. Or damage, sorry, so much damage. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I really don't know what I'm supposed to... I'm supposed to protect them, I'm pretty sure. Oh, uh, can I heal them? That could be part of the equation here. I think I just need to kill them. Yeah, these guys shoot with their butts. Reminds me of Starship Troopers, the original Starship Troopers, which was awesome! I never did see the sequels. I heard they were kind of crappy. The original was amazing. Uh, you know, I grew up with that stuff. Awesome, awesome movies. Or awesome movie. I think... If they were going to make a sequel, they would have had to make it with the original cast, which was uh, Neil Patrick Harris and uh, uh, the other guy, the other girl. I forget the name. The All I remember is Neil right. Patrick Harris, because Neil Patrick Ca Harris run. is awesome them, as well. Please. Yeah, and so, of course, you get loot. Uh, Christite is the one of the currencies. Like a lot of these free-to-play games, it ha does have multiple currencies. Uh, of course, it has the... Uh, oh, we're in trouble here. Ran out of ammunition. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, did we lose? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, I don't know what happened there. Okay. Uh, whoo! Okay, we'll get to the uh, research team. Look at that. Oh yeah, see, it's so satisfying. And you can spend, and you get achievements. You can earn achievements and actually little prizes and stuff like cool little hats and and neat things like swag in in game swag for doing certain things. And I I don't know exactly. I don't remember what all the things you can actually uh, earn. But uh, one of the challenges or one of the achievements was to hit you know, the highest points in the game, and really all you have to do that is either gliders or your jetpack. So, 
there's other ways too, but you know, those are your primary ways. So, uh, and if you get all the high points, you win that uh, achievement and possibly goodies. And yeah, anyway, uh, currency, yes, multiple types of currency. There is Christite, which is kind of the generic currency. Oh, this guy. Uh, generic currency that you earn in doing just about everything in the game. It is an in-game currency. Then there is the red, uh, the red dot currencies. I forget what they're called. It's the purchased currency. And then there's sub currencies that you use to do. There's a currency you use to buy things on the market, buy and sell things on the market, um, which you buy with the crystal, which is in-game currency. So that's good. Um, and then there's tokens which you use to play these vending machines, which are kind of like slot machines where you can win cool stuff and you get those tokens by, of course, you can buy them, you can buy the tokens, and, uh, well, you can buy the, the red currency, uh, and buy the tokens, I believe, or you can earn the tokens doing missions, which is what we're doing right now. We're actually going to earn ourselves a copper token, which will allow us a spin on, uh, one of these little vending machines. Now, of course, there's different types of tokens. So there's gold, there's silver, you know, and, and, and the better the quality of metal, um, the better the uh, rewards can be. So you can win some permanent in-game items that are absolutely fabulous. Um, or you can win a whole bunch of uh, nothing. So there's, there's a gamble. And, you know, uh, Defiance did the same thing, you know, that you know, really appealed to the gambling nature of the gaming community those bastards i love them uh you know it's free to play right so they got to make their money somehow and i encourage that so that's fine i'm not a big fan of free to play but on the other side of it you got to pick one you can't do all of it uh, and i do get upset when you know they you get these games that and i don't want to mention any names <laughs> yeah so um <coughs> that decide they're going to charge an enormous amount of money for the game as well as charge for funny things like transportation, horses, I mean stuff like that and, and uh, unplayable character classes unless you pay and stuff like that. So that's where I get upset. But if you're just going to do straight up free to play, you got to make your money somehow. I wouldn't say this game is necessarily totally pay to win because you can earn everything that you can buy I believe correct me if I'm wrong you can earn everything that you can buy of course it takes a lot of work and there's a lot of random chance uh, involved with that in other words uh, you can come in and buy a vehicle or you can earn it at, you know at level 16 and it may not be the same vehicle uh, you know this, this to get the same quality you may have to wait or you may have to try to gamble with the uh, vending machines. Uh, but Defiance was the same way. Defiance, exactly the same thing. Defiance, uh, you paid, you paid for different tiers of items, and it was completely random what count came out of the crates, I believe. Uh, totally fun. Uh, I think, hold on. Oh, shit. Went the wrong way, guys. Okay, I'll be right back with you. Okay, I'm back, and I'm in the thick of things again. We're just going to uh, finish this off. I'm hoping to get to the end of the mission so that uh, you guys can see. Unfortunately, the battle sequences here weren't that great, but it is, it do I promise you, once you get into something big with a group of people, it's like nothing you've ever played before. And of course, you know, unlike other games like uh, Call of Duty and that, it's, it's fanciful, right? You're fighting, you're in a totally different world. You're using these maps like they're they're like mechs, right? You know, you they're fully you're fully armored. Oh, I'm out of ammunition again. Oh, I seem to be out of ammunition. You're near the Andre facility, right? My people uh -oh. are being overrun. Help them, please. Either this is a really long mission, or I'm just not doing something right. Because now I'm supposed to go to a different one. So weird. Okay. Here we go. Oh, I hope this is the last battle. I hope so. <laughs> uh, uh, next episode, I will get set up to be uh, 
in a squad of people with a thumper. It is exciting and so much fun. You will love it. You will absolutely love it. Okay, I think I'm supposed to be killing these guys. These guys seem to be kind of the, uh, the nemesis of these scientist dudes. And they spew a lot of good stuff. That's another thing. I don't think those scientists are doing so well. They seem to be... They're killing my scientists. My people are being overrun. Help them, please. Oh, this is not going well. Okay, guys. I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, let it suffice it to say that if you decide to take the plunge and download Firefall, you will not be disappointed. Feel free to look me up. I'd love to play with you guys. Uh, I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to make a squad. I or make a army. They call it an army and not a guild in this. I think uh, right now I'm going to stick with the guild I'm in. I don't really know them, but uh, uh, well, who knows? Who knows what the future is going to bring? If you happen to jump in, look me up. We'll set up some thumping. I'll give you some tutorials. It'll be so much fun. I hope to see you guys here. No, I am not paid by the Firefall developers. I just like this game that much. Okay, thanks guys. Have a good one.